was probably no decade in the U.S. in which cars underwent such a radical transformation than the 1980s decade. Most American cars during the 1980s shrunk in overall size, encountered massive engine displacement downsizing, and a transformation from rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive. Also, many good and popular car models went the way of the dinosaur during the 1980s. Here's a list of five good 1980s cars that were canceled that should have lived on into the 1990s and beyond. AMC Eagle The 1980-1988 AMC Eagle was a car ahead of its time. AMC had done a very good job of hiding the age of the Eagle's platform and styling, which first appeared when the AMC Hornet debuted for the 1970 model year. The Eagle was generally fairly well equipped with options. Leather seats along with many power and convenience options were available. At the beginning of the Eagle's production run, the Eagle was available in a sporty two-door hatchback, a two-door coupe, a two-door cam back, four-door sedan, and four-door station wagon. Only the wagon survived until the end of Eagle production. Its very torquey 4.2-liter inline six-cylinder engine was the same engine available in the Jeep CJ7 and early first-generation Jeep Wrangler. For some model years, a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine was also available. What made the Eagle a car of the future was its state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system, the Select Drive system, which debuted in the middle of the 1981 model year. For the 1984 model year, this system allowed the engagement and disengagement of four-wheel drive while the Eagle was in motion. The Eagle had substantial elevated ground clearance for a car and had good on-road manners. However, it was just as capable off-road as most AMC-produced four-wheel drive Jeeps at the time. The Eagle deserved to live on into the 1990s decade. The Chrysler Corporation, after purchasing AMC, should have given the four-wheel drive Eagle the platform and styling updates it deserved. Instead, the Eagle became a very short-lived new car brand. If the four-wheel drive Eagle hadn't been canceled during the 1988 model year, it would certainly still be around today in at least wagon form to compete with the very popular all-wheel drive Subaru Outback wagon. Buick Grand National when there was a resurgence of V8-powered rear-wheel drive muscle cars during the 1980s, Buick went a different direction. It produced the 1984 to 1987 Buick Grand National, which was a modern two-door muscle car powered by Buick's turbo 3.8-liter SFI V6. It was available only in a black exterior color, and it was one of the coolest-looking cars on America's streets during the 1980s. The first Grand National was the 1982 Buick Grand National, which had a two-tone gray and silver exterior color. However, it was just an appearance package. Out of the only 215 produced for 1982, very few were equipped with Buick's turbo 3.8 liter V6. It was Buick's revival of the Grand National for 1984 in its new all-black exterior paint scheme and equipped with every performance part Buick could muster. That created the legendary Grand National that was the best muscle car of the 1980s. The 1984 to 1985 Grand National had 200 horsepower, which gave it superiority over most of its muscle car competition at the time. For 1986, Buick added an intercooler and gave it a 235 horsepower rating and a 245 horsepower rating for 1987. These ratings were very underrated. True output for both model years was somewhere between 275 to 300 horsepower. 
1986 to 1987 Buick Grand National was the quickest accelerating American production car at the time. Previously, this honor had been the Chevrolet Corvettes. Buick contracted with ASC McLaren for the 1987 model year to produce a low production, super high performance version of the Grand National called the GNX. Only 547 GNXs were built for 1987 versus the 20,194 Grand Nationals that Buick produced for 1987. The GNX showcased the future potential of the Buick Grand National had it continued to be produced well into the 1990s. The Buick Grand National did not return for the 1988 model year because GM canceled the rear-wheel drive G-body platform it used. Buick and GM should have found a way to keep the rear-wheel drive Buick Grand National alive. Cadillac Cimarron Back in the late 1970s and early 1980s, Cadillac had done everything right researching and identifying what would become one of the future's largest growing market segments in luxury vehicles, compact luxury cars. Why are compact luxury cars so important? First, they can be more easily sold in much higher volume than more expensive luxury cars. Second, they bring into a car brand a new pool of young buyers who will buy more expensive models of that luxury car brand in the future as their income and financial well-being increases. This is where the front-wheel drive, four-door, 1982-1988 Cadillac Cimarron came into the picture. It was supposed to offer Cadillac luxury, technology, and quality to younger buyers. On the surface, it was a brilliant plan. After all, Cadillac had done the same before with the successful release of the smaller rear-wheel drive 1976 Cadillac Seville, which was partially based on the budget-oriented Chevrolet Nova's X-Platform. However, the Cimarron was a disaster, where the 1976 Seville didn't look like a 1976 Nova. The 1982 Cimarron looked like a rebadged 1982 Chevrolet Cavalier. Both were built on the same GM J-body platform and shared many common parts. Cadillac, unfortunately, hadn't spent the time giving the Cimarron its own distinctive exterior styling to go with its leather interior. By 1985, a 130 horsepower 2.8 liter V6 was now optional, finally giving the Cimarron the infusion of power it needed. The underpowered four-cylinder engine would be gone by 1987. When equipped with a 5-speed manual transmission, the 2.8-liter V6 Cimarron provided a European touring car driving experience with very good handling and acceleration. By 1987, Cimarron exterior styling looked more Cadillac than Chevrolet. When Cadillac finally evolved the Cimarron into the car it should have been back in 1982, GM canceled its production at the end of the 1988 model year. Had the Cimarron been given a second generation, which would have included sleeker, more unique exterior styling and an infusion of more power that would have caused Cadillac to attract many new young car buyers during the 1990s and beyond thus making Cadillac a much more popular car brand today than it currently is. Mitsubishi Starion ESIR Mitsubishi was late entering into the U.S. car market compared to Honda, Toyota, and Datsun. However, its market share in the U.S expanded quickly during the 1980s because of its business association with the Chrysler Corporation, which first allowed Mitsubishi to enter into the U.S. market in the 1970s by producing Dodge and Plymouth models that were rebadged versions of its cars. 
Mitsubishi continued to produce cars for the different Chrysler Corporation brands during the 1980s and 1990s. It also began selling its cars and trucks under the Mitsubishi brand name starting in the early 1980s. At this time, it debuted the rear-wheel drive Starion for the 1983 model year to compete in the American 2 Plus 2 sports car market. The 1983 Starion had a 145 horsepower turbo 2.6 liter four-cylinder engine that gave it great performance for its day. However, it was the 1986 to 1989 Starion ESIR, which was the wide-body version of the Starion, which gave the Starion true performance car credentials. It had the intercooler version of the turbo 2.6 liter 4, which had 176 or 188 horsepower, depending on model year. The Starion ESIR was fun to drive, had great handling, and was a fast car that bested many performance cars of its era. Not to mention, it was one of the best looking performance cars of its era. It looked like a sleeker and more muscular version of the Porsche 944. Mitsubishi also offered different versions of its Starion under the Conquest model name, which was sold during different model years in the 1980s under the Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler brand names. The Starion was replaced by the front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive Mitsubishi Eclipse and the front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive Mitsubishi 3000 GT. These cars would be successful, but they didn't have the character or the looks of the rear-wheel drive Starion ESIR. Pontiac Fiero just like the Cimarron mentioned earlier, the Pontiac Fiero was canceled before it could become the car it was destined to be. When the Fiero was first released for the 1984 model year, it was America's first mid-engine sports car. However, to get the Fiero approved for production by GM management, Pontiac was forced to cut corners for budgetary reasons. This meant the first year 1984 Fiero was not the well-rounded sports car Pontiac wanted to build. The 1984 Fiero was a two-seat sports car that handled well and looked like a European mid-engine sports car, but was only equipped with an underpowered 92 horsepower 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, and the Fiero's steering feel was not very precise. For 1985, a 140 horsepower 2.8 liter V6 with multi-port fuel injection was now optional, giving the Fiero the power boost it needed. Gradually, year by year, Pontiac improved the Fiero, and by 1988, the GT and Formula models had engine power output, handling, steering feel, and braking that were all very good. Unfortunately, sales by 1988 had really declined from the 136,840 Fieros produced for the 1984 model year, so GM canceled the Fiero in the middle of the 1988 model year. Why the Fiero deserved to remain in production was a new, sleeker, second-generation Fiero that would have weighed no more than 3,000 pounds was scheduled to be released for the 1989 or 1990 model year with an available 3.4 liter dual overhead cam V6, which would have produced anywhere from 200 to 220 horsepower. This lightweight, high-performance Fiero would have given Pontiac a reasonably priced, genuine, high-performance two-seat mid-engine sports car that at the time would have competed with the much more expensive two-seat sports cars from Europe. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. Please subscribe since your support is the reason this channel is a success. And please make sure to click on the bell icon so that you never miss a new video release.